Hi, welcome back. I'm Ray Gibson from Art27. We're a platform for artists, arts educators and arts organisations working in Europe and beyond, sharing stories, cultural programmes and raising awareness of critical issues such as social inclusion. Today is the 5th of October 2020 and it is World Teachers Day. And some great projects already that we've shared and we've just seen a lovely video, uh, the Groove Forward trailer video from Music for Social Transformation, uh, which is something our next guest is, is working on. Uh, Juan David Garzon, welcome. How are you? Fine. Thank you, Ray. How are you? How is the audience? Nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, th thanks for recognizing our audience who can't answer back. Unless they Maybe they can the put chat. some chats, I guess. Exactly. So uh, people watching on YouTube and Facebook, um, you can write to us and uh, let us know your questions, thoughts, comments, and uh, yeah, feel invited to, to connect. Um, so Juan, can you tell us more about Music for Social Transformation? Um, how did this come about? Uh, what exactly are you working on? Let our audience get to know all of these themes. I can see a nice ukulele in the background, so I can see the musical influence. <laughs> True. Yes, thanks for the question. Um, my background starts something like uh, 17 years uh, ago. I come originally from Colombia. Now I'm living in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And I started uh, my, my teaching career at the Javeriana University in Bogota. That's where I also did my, my bachelor studies in music. And I had the fortune of uh, receiving uh, further education in music pedagogics and music teaching from the university. And, and I saw myself very quickly involved with projects that had to do with social inclusion, uh, mm -hmm. mainly in the, there are many peripheral uh, neighborhoods in Bogota where they don't have very good access uh, to opportunities and kids don't have um, much access to, con to, to education and music education. So together with the university, I was leading many different projects to bring music to those schools and mostly to give tools to local music teachers and into how to use music as a tool to connect with their students. Mm -hmm. and in many cases in this in these neighborhoods or in these schools we would have students that would come from um, conflicting regions in, in colombia back then we we were still having loads of migrants coming from the provinces to the big cities because they were fleeing from the armed conflict in many different regions so these these students already um, were having trouble connecting to this new place where they were and this was kind of like my start. Um, I kept on working on uh, many different projects in Bogota until I, I moved to, uh, to Norway to continue my, my studies, to further into my studies. And later on, when I was traveling to Germany and, and continuing my studies, I started to uh, work with, that was actually the moment where many, many people coming from from war zones were arriving to Europe and mm. I could use my, my previous knowledge and my previous experience to work with related projects using music as a tool to connect people and as a tool to allow people to express their uh, emotions. Basically because that's for me the way that I have been doing it all my life. I have always had um, a little bit of a hard time expressing my emotions through words, through um, basically through through the spoken language, and I've used music a w as a way to to um, channelize or to uh, let go of my of how I feel, um, and I've used that same technique to connect with others and to um, support them into. Uh, coming in contact with their emotions and letting uh, things go in, in, a, in a creative way. Mm -hmm. So since, uh, since 2014, 
Um, I have been involved with such projects mainly in Germany, working with kids orchestras, working in uh, neighborhoods and areas where many people from dif different cultures and different backgrounds are have been somehow thrown uh, in 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 closed neighborhoods and sometimes they even have problems between each other because they come from very different cultures um mm. and and through music orchestras for kids um and and i have been working on that subject especially with this organization that that gave me that's this first chance to experience this and this uh, organization in northern germany called ton talente um and through through that network i started expanding and and growing and doing all all sorts of other projects now um now i'm living in the netherlands but working still with ton talente on a remote basis and um and now connected with other organizations in, in Europe and with PPLG in, in, in Greece and with Musicians Without Borders uh, with some of their different projects here in, in, in Europe. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's very interesting to hear your experience back in Colombia as well and um, to recognize those common causes that you mentioned, you know, bringing that experience from Colombia, recognizing when you were in, you said you were in Finland or Norway, um, and what was going on in Europe, and the common cause being conflict. Um, and it's interesting as well that it, in Colombia, it sounded like uh, people were being displaced from an internal conflict within the country. And this also happens in Europe, and it's not just um, people going across borders and, and having to find a new home. It's also people being displaced within the country and leaving a city where it's dangerous and having to find refuge somewhere else within that country. But yeah, the common cause being conflict and, and war. And it's easy to forget that when we only look at the results on the news and we see people in a camp, uh, you know, and now they're wearing the label as a refugee, uh, but it's a war crisis, it's a war caused um situation that these people are living through okay um and a tone uh tone talent in um uh, in germany that's for teenagers is it uh, that you're working with there yeah with with this organization we work with many different age groups and and mm -hmm. types of types of groups and the work that i have been doing will have always been with teenagers and children and and uh, and so basically all the projects that I'm involved are are aimed to teenagers and, and to and to children. So this um, this some of the images that you saw in that little trailer mm -hmm. uh, before our conversation, those were um, basically gathered throughout a series of projects that we do um, very focused on working on different subjects. Uh, like, uh, for example, how we connect with nature through music, using music as a as a connector, right. um, or for example, how we experience democracy in our everyday life. So we basically design workshops and and basically long weeks for these teenagers where we explore and we. And we basically do our, re our research um, based on arts. So we use the arts to explore and to research how do we relate with different subjects like those that I mentioned. And we try to and manage to also not talk about those, those concepts in a conceptual way, but we try to really experience them um, in, within the dynamics of music making. So, for mm -hmm. example, in an orchestra setting, you have many of social dynamics that happen in everyday life. So decision making also happens when you produce music, when you are on a group environment. So we basically use the music as a, a, a mirror for social interaction. Mm -hmm. And there we use all those dynamics to help us reflect on how those dynamics happen in everyday life. And so how can we better take those decisions? 
like in that project uh, aimed about democracy and for example the, that other to reconnect with the poles of the earth so we basically went out and explored many different nature areas and and that was after after a long corona kind of small lockdown for many of the for the kids and the teenagers and for them it was such a such an interesting and important process to to be out and to really breathe the fresh air and and to do many different music activities that would help us kind of go deeper into that into that um, state like mm. mental state yeah it's amazing how music can touch you far more than words uh, at times and the connection that you feel with people when you play together um or as an audience and as a performer it, it's magic isn't it so yeah it can certainly overcome barriers and and it can be uh, a proxy for building a community that that can carry on that's fantastic um, and I've read about you uh, being involved in a project in Central Africa as well, a three-year project that's coming up. Is that right? True. Um, together with the, the IUCN, which is a very big uh, conservation organization that works in many, many different places of mm -hmm. uh, the world, um, they are basically working in the conservation area of the Virunga Park with, in Central Africa and all the neighboring countries um, that have many different youth groups, um, those, those young people, they need a way to somehow regain their voice um, because the political and the yeah, basically the political situation is, is very complex. And sometimes, um, as expressed by, by the IUCN, those youngsters don't have um, a real way to connect with the surrounding nature. And sometimes they don't see the park and the nature um, that surrounds them as the very main resource that it's going to be lasting them for eight, for decades, for for a long time. And it's, it's not only to a, a place where you extract, but a place where you give. So the idea was, or is, to use many different um, disciplines to um, to help those, those youth groups to better understand each other and to understand the different actors that take place in this in, in in the surroundings, like the park rangers and the local authorities, um, and and using sports and music and radio was uh, a way for to to give cohesion to that whole discussion that's happening there, and give uh, the chance for these youth groups to have to regain their voice and to regain their um, what their own experience of the place where they live so the idea is to um to go further with this with this project um the the project was applying for uh european commission funding unfortunately that we just recently heard that uh, the funding is not possible to acquire but we are going to look for other ways of of continuing the project because to yeah. us this this project has a lot of meaning because this area is is the home of so many species and so much so many um mm. plants and nature that needs to be preserved right yeah it's good you don't give up on it great okay and you have some alternatives for funding or you're just going to try to bootstrap and do everything anyway or how are you going to get over this well the the project is so big and it's it's so complex that really needs many different sources mm -hmm. of funding okay um so we are right now looking into how it can be possible it can the it can come through and be possible 
um, because actually this news we heard actually really last week, at the end of last week. Um, mm. And it was um, a little bit, of course, a little bit disappointing, but in any case, we, we believe so much in this project that we need to find a way to, to move forward also as a consortium of, of organizations that are working on this project. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, it's, it needs to continue. Yeah. Well, I hope it does. I hope it does. Um, anyone listening, if you can help, please reach out to, uh, Juan, you can find Juan at, uh, JuanDavidGarzon.com, which is J-U-A-N-D-A-V-I-D-G-A-R-Z-O-N.com, JuanDavidGarzon.com. True. Um, now, uh, Juan, you're our last guest today, so uh, you get the privilege of helping us wrap up. Uh, so if, if we zoom out a little bit and think about World Teachers Day, um, if I may put you on the spot, what, what do you think Please. is the, the role of a teacher in modern times? Well, this is um this is a, a great question and and yeah, very big question. But I guess in these modern times and this is basically a, a little bit of my philosophy of um education and it, it is really how how we stimulate and properly motivate our students into taking over and uh, into becoming the people that that they want to be and and so using whatever it is our our um, field of study or our whatever that we teach it's basically um, for me bringing out the best out of of, of us and of course motivate bringing the motivation so that those students can really come to their highest potential or, or fulfill those those um yeah those dreams and goals so i really focus on how i motivate my students how how i keep because in this world and at this current times it's easy to get demotivated with so many things mm. and especially coming from what I do with music. Um, music is a thing that it's like a slow cook kind of discipline. It, it, it needs time. It needs lots of um, devotion and, and lots of basically practice and time. And sometimes we, we forget that the good things come, comes with, with lots of effort and time. Mm -hmm. And practice, yeah and practice and and sometimes we kind of want to expect results on a very fast pace and sometimes music learning in nowadays can be very frustrating because it's still on a very slow pace so motivation is this thing that at least from my point of view allows us teachers to um to bring forward all that all that kind of knowledge and and i basically use that after uh a, a person that i very much admire katana bravo malo who she was my my uh my secondary music teacher and i actually very much follow her her style of teaching and i look forward to being as much as i can like her because she was really this person that could motivate students in so much that students would actually do everything on their own. And she was more like a guide. She was yeah, more like yeah. a, you like a coach. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. More, more like a coach mm -hmm. because the knowledge you have to discover it for yourself. So the teacher can only show you uh, the multiple doors where you can go as a as a student mm -hmm. and but you as a student actually have to take the step but if the if the teacher gives you the the right motivation and the right direction you you won't hesitate to take the, that further step so that's kind of like, like how i see it 
well, I, I hope that you continue to live up to her fine example. And uh, it seems so. And you said you don't express yourself as well in words as you do in music. So I would love to hear you play sometime. <laughs> and I, I'm sure our guests have uh, very much enjoyed hearing your story. And uh, yeah, this has been World Teachers Day from um, Art27. Thanks to all of our guests and, and finally to Juan. Thank you, Ray. Um, Thank you for everyone. Thank you to the team of Art27. Yeah, well said. Uh, you can find Art27 on art27.art, appropriately enough. So uh, wherever you are today, keep learning. Uh, remember your teachers as they, uh, they guide us through good times and bad, uh, and their shining lights and, and great examples. And uh, they need our support and help. They have the bandwidth of um, students, um, especially the youth who are going to take us on this journey for the future. So thanks again for joining and we'll talk to you soon.